I was interested in all those insoluble, impossible questions, you know, not the logical ones and the neat analytic ones. I can't help but recall Teachers College in 68. But we had a meetings at Teachers College when after the police had been at Columbia, and I remember the sound of guitars in the hall and posters and people moving. Those to me were the good days. With everything was a mess. Education to me became a kind of emancipatory thing. You know, I, I wasn't going to be a bureaucrat. I was going to be a liberator by means of education and writing and literature. Maxine would often say, I'm a believer in the unanswerable questions, the really hard ones. Anything that separates the head from the body is false. I'm interested in aesthetics and aesthetic education because I'm interested in what happens between you or me and the wall where the Monet hangs. The work of art only becomes a work of art when you experience it in a certain way. I desire to be nudged into a kind of wide awakeness. What I'm most afraid of in the world is numbness, is not feeling anything, you know, or what Dewey called the anesthetic, the, uh, which is opposed to the aesthetic. To me, to give art a greater centrality in the classroom, to give imagination a greater centrality, is to introduce into the classroom that image of active interpretation. Uh, uh, it, it's a rejection of a merely passive taking in. We all go looking for the truth. We need the truth. We need something to stand on. But I think the reason teaching is so fascinating today is because of multiplicity, is because the object is not to answer, but to engage the student in the search. That's what you do. That's what you do. And to empower the child to search for meaning.